and this I would hand code um, the second part <coughs> of the G code needed to cut out the profile for this cam and I'm not very good at hand coding but actually um, this has been made pretty easy for me because um, the instructions that came along with the plans that Bill got um, actually had in the instructions a sheet showing you to turn the rotary table to whatever cam angle and at what um, <coughs> distance from zero the cutter should be. This is the radius of the cutter from the zero, the center of the table. And as you look down each line, each line is an angle to turn the table to, and then for each line is the actual um, radius that the line should intersect at. Well, the way this is written out right here is exactly the code needed for the G code. And what all I have to do to make this into G code is put an A for my A axis, which is my rotary axis in front of the zero, and then a Y in front of 1.750. And that's my first line of code for manually um, cutting this profile out. Now to start with, I, I have to hand write the code um, to move from zero out beyond the actual circumference of the part down to the level in Z that I want to work at, which is the first lobe, and then back in to um, this point, only I would stop five thousandths from this point uh, as a rapid and then type in G1 to uh, slow it down. I would type in G1 and probably feed of uh, 1.4 so I have a slow feed in and then I'll, I'll show you how it would go. Uh, let me move this back out of the way. But each line of this following through, when I get through this, all from here to here is the actual lobe. And then the next line I would have to type, if you see here, it's telling you to take the cam angle from 32 to 90. The next line, all I have to type in is A90 and it'll cut that steady arc until it gets to the next lobe. At that point, I'm at 90 here, and it starts cutting the shape of the lobe with each line of the code here. So let me take you actually into uh, the code I've already written, which after we've looked at the drawings, we found an error in the drawings and it was labeled wrong. I'm gonna start off with showing you the profile of the part again. This, this would all be cut out on the lathe. Um, it would be just a uh, flat disc, but there's two sections. There's a section sticking out for intake and a section sticking out for exhaust. This would be rotated and mounted flat down on the rotary axis and centered up off the zero. <coughs> so that's the way we're actually looking at this and approaching it with the code. Then the actual code, um, I'll open up here that I've written so far. I, I can't sit here and write each line of code for you. This video would be way too long. Um, this this first section here is the code I did in the last video in D2 and C. Um, the material was centered underneath the Z axis and zeroed. And this is cutting that outer profile uh, and leaving five thousandths to come in for a, a an actual finished pass. This is quite long. Um, this part of the code, like I say, I'm not good at manual coding. Thank goodness I got software to do this. But there's I there's no software that I know of that comes in from the side and writes a code to do an undercut. So that that part of it has to be hand coded. So I'm feeding down till I got get to the section where I'm actually hand coding and I'll show you what I've done okay um, right here the code is ended for actually cutting out the profile and leaving five thousandths and that passed through both the intake lobe and the exhaust lobe going down so all eight lobes are on both levels now at this point um, I only need four lobes on each level uh, four intake lobes and then drop down and four exhaust lobes. 
Uh, so in order to do this, my first line of code is going to make sure that uh, Z is an inch above the material. Then it's going to say to 0A, and just in case it wasn't already zeroed up here, just to make sure it's back to zero, so my rotary axis is on zero. Um, it's going to send Y out to 1.850, um, which is beyond any material that's left, and then tell Z to drop to negative 0.145, and that's so the cutter is at... Uh, directly in line with the full face of uh, the first cam lobe. It's not. It's going to cut it all in one pass. Now, going around this time, um, I want to cut out all the sections of lobe that aren't needed on each level. So the first section I need to remove is A32, which is 32 degrees. And uh, I move into that position. I tell it the G01 is G1 is the slow feed rate code, and the F is the speed that I'm going to feed at, which is F1.4. Then I tell Y to move in so that the uh, rotary axis moves in towards the cutter. Uh, I tell it G1 feed. I, I fed in at a slow feed rate. I'm going to actually cut at a little higher feed rate. The G1 now moves the feed rate up to six, and it tells once it's moved into um, 1.755, then it rotates um, the rotary axis to 90 degrees. Once it reaches 90 degrees, it puts it back into the fast mode of motion G00, tells it to back out away from the material, to turn A axis to 122 degrees to slow the feed rate down again, to move back in against the material, uh, to speed the feed rate back it up again, and then t rotate the rotary axis into 180. Now, what this is doing, and it goes all the way around each level, once around a, uh, the exhaust, and once around the intake, is that on this picture here, if you see the dotted lines, that means that underneath this lobe, there is no material. So it's actually, this first section here is going, avoiding the lobe, moving into, well, it would be up here. It's avoiding the lobe, it come in right here, and it's cutting out the material from here to here. Then it will avoid the lobe and move back over to this section and cut the material out moving around and it does it from once again it'll move in from here and cut all the material out to the next lobe then it moves down and does exactly the same thing on the next set of lobes below uh, the top up here uh, doesn't need this lobe on the bottom one and there's eight lobes on both levels when it starts it'll start here cut to here and remove that lobe on that level <coughs> so now that when it gets done finishing these two sections, it ends up the top one has four lobes and the bottom one has four lobes. Uh, so let me move this back out of the way. So as I move down through the code, it'll see first it says removing exhaust lobes off of intake cam profile. And then it says as, when we get down here, it moves Z down to the next part of the cam and it removes the intake lobes off the cam profile. Okay, and then we move on down. And as I was telling you in the sheet of instructions, each line of, of instructions that it gave um, is actually the code you need for the rotary axis to cut out each one of the profiles. So if, if you were to type uh, first line I have here is dropping the z-axis to the correct level to cut the profile. Uh, starting out A00, it starts with Y out away from the material. Make sure the uh, uh, rotary axis is starting at zero, so we're in the right location. It drops to Z down to cut the first profile. 
it sets a feed rate of G1 to a feed of 6 and then each line of this is turning the rotary table one degree and telling Y where to go. Okay, if, if you were to tell A is the rotary axis, if you were to, to tell the rotary axis to turn on one line and then move the Y down to the next line, it would do the A move first and then the Y move which would be the problem I was saying in, in earlier posts about this being a step motion. But seeing it moves on the same line, they accomplish, they start and finish both moves at the same time. So this, this motion is actually an arc. And as the table moves, it will, both, both of these measurements are met at the same time. So from the instructions that I showed you earlier that came, you can see that um, the actual plans, you can see that each line of this code is exactly the lines that you would turn the rotary axis, move the Y axis, turn the rotary axis, move the Y axis. So really it's pretty easy to do. Uh, once it gets done with the first set of lines, okay, then it says to move to 90 degrees, if you can see it over here, and there's the 90 degree move. Now to do all the rest of this circle, I already have all the Y moves. So all I had to do was copy this section, just literally take this section right here, I didn't grab it all, but take that section right there, copy it down below that 90 degree move, and then change all the A moves to continue on 91, 92, 93. Uh, so, and, and I could just keep copying this four times until I've worked all the way around the circumference of the uh, entire intake profile. So you can see here, here's the 180 move. Uh, there's the 270 move. There's your 360 move right here. So the whole entire profile has been cut out in one steady motion as the A axis makes a complete revolution. And when it makes it back to 360, the Y axis backs out away from the material. A axis now needs to begin at 43 degrees for the lower profile. Z drops to the lower profile's level and the whole thing starts over from 43 degrees with the actual lobe profile for the exhaust and it's the same thing it's just written into the direction so I mean this is not a brainer for me I, I'm not a hand coder I just have to be really careful that as I'm doing what I'm doing um, I'm making sure that I move out away from the material uh, I move back into the material at a slow feed rate um, my initial moves that coming into the material can be fast, but I stay off five thousandths from the material and then slowly move in for the actual uh, finish cut. Um, this, if, if you notice the bar over here on the side, the hand coating is really quite short. And uh, there's another line down here that if your Mach 3 is not set correctly, um, if you go beyond 360 with a code, my final code on completing this exhaust since we started at 43 means it has to return back to 43 degrees to complete a circle. Well, in order to get it to do that, Mach 3, if you don't have it in the right mode, you have to add the 43 degrees to the 360 and tell it to go to A403, um, which doesn't make sense, but if, you, if I don't type A403 and Mach 3 is set in the wrong mode, then from when it sees the A403, it will try to reverse and go backwards to that 43. Uh, so this here ensures that it will not go backwards. It will continue beyond uh, 360 degrees and cut to 43 degrees. Uh, if you have it in the right mode, you can just type in 43 degrees and it won't 
change the direction of cut, it'll continue on. But this is just a safety factor to make sure that um, it it continues on instead of reversing and wiping all the lobes off I've already made. Uh, the final code is just uh, stopping the spindle, stopping the coolant. Um, it's a G0 move, a fast move for Y to back completely away from the material, out away from it, for Z to move up to one inch above the material, for A and Y to return to zero, and M30 rewinds so the entire code will run again. Um, I'll take the code now and show it to you in um, Mach 3. And <coughs> what I've done was, let me find Mach 3 here. What I did was, uh, I hope it works on this computer because this computer doesn't run a machine. Hopefully it will. I got a lot running once again. Both codes are uh, actually working on the same material in the same place. So to keep it from being confusing, um, I, I'm actually... Uh, cutting this uh, I'm going to stand the AXS up so you can see it otherwise you wouldn't be able to see it uh, it would be covered with the first uh, roughing profile I babble when I'm sitting here trying to think take a second to open like I said, there's a lot running here. Uh, let me see if I can shut some of this down. I'll hit reset. I'll check my config real quick to make sure this is going to be in view. And I have A axis rotations on X. I want to use radius. Say OK. And then I have to go locate the G code. Uh, this is it. All right. Uh, I'm going to go to Toolpath. And if you look, this first part that you're looking at is the roughing only. And actually, the hand coding is sitting on the same plane that you're, you're looking at right here. Oh, let me zero this. Let me zero it and re regen. I should have zeroed to start. Okay. Now I'll go to Toolpath and click Regen. All right. This is looking down on the roughing profile. The um, finishing profile that's coming in from the side is working in exactly the same area, but I turned its axis so we could see it. And if I rotate around now, um, you can see the actual paths of the uh, profiling these lobes Oop. of course it just slid right off the screen on me let me see if I can do it again rotate it around okay you can see the two paths right here of profiling the lobes and if you look it's leaving a lobe and it's coming around and they're on two different levels I'm trying to rotate this for a better view it's hard to do there I'd really have to zoom in Hopefully, that's, I don't think it's going to let me get a good view of it. Rotate some more. Okay, here you can see them, one, on one underneath the other. And it's the angle of the view, but you can see one's below the other one. And this is cutting the entire profile out around 360 degrees. Pl look, you can see these in moves. That's cutting out the lobes that are above or below the other lobes. This is the cutters actually moving in, cutting out this line below or above this line. So hopefully, uh, I, I know I babble sometimes and it, it's kind of hard to understand, but hopefully by a, a visualization here you can get an idea of what what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. 
Uh, there's going to be some setup things that I want to go through before I actually start cutting this because I also still want to, even though I'm only moving one axis that has backlash, I, I still, and, and Mach 3 will take care of that, I, I still want to address that backlash and um, keep it from having any chatter because I'd like to do this in, a in just one pass and not have to come back and grind it. So. Uh, that's it for this video. Hopefully it made sense.